conditioned reflexes. <laughs> it's by Pavlov. Yes, yes. It's out at the moment, but uh, if you'd like to leave your name, I could uh, reserve it for you. I'll come back then. Do. Oh, uh, would you like to leave your phone number? I did. Oh, so you did, dear. Because you know the reason why you wake up so early every morning, don't you? You've got a big emotional problem, Lewis. Yes. I mean, it's a well-known biological fact that some of us need more than the normal outlet for our creative urges. In the old days, of course, the seven-year itch was something you scratched, not landed up in the divorce courts with. What price Romeo today, eh? Hmm. You can just see him, can't you? Writing to the papers. Worried teenager Verona. <laughs> well, I wouldn't give much for his chances if he tried to climb that drain pipe. The bloody thing had collapsed before he cut his leg over the sill. A couple of inches in the news of the world and a complex for life. Which doesn't have you any. Look at that wallpaper. Look at those stags. Oh. Three layers of house and garden pink, and they're still rampant. Probably the paint makes them breed or something, I don't know. You know, you're a stag at bay, all right, Lewis. 
Well, what's it going to be then, boy? Hmm? Doing something and regretting it, or not doing something and waking up in a state like this every morning? Sammy Bach, come on in now. Now you come to Mum and I'll give you some nice warm milk. Letting him out like that, run over he could have been. <whistles> come on now, Sammy Bach. Now you come to Mum. Come on now, my answer. Now come on to Mum. There's a good boy. Now get in and stay in. Oh, dog, I don't know who is out on the streets. I don't know what's the matter with him. Do you know that? What? What? Laughing. I was laughing when? All night. I was laughing all night. I, I was awake all night, you mean, don't you? You know, the first time I closed my eyes, 20 past six. Ten minutes is all I had all night. Those bloody stags, they're on the march again. Well, look, I'll give them another coat. There's still some left in the tin. Want to paint the beggars with quicklime is the only answer. Uh, uh, what's this thing doing here? Some sort of subtle hint or something, is it? No, I... I just put it out so you wouldn't forget to post it. Oh. Well, I won't forget to post it. No, well, it's just that it's been on the mantelpiece for a week. Hmm. Yes, I know that, love. I, I put it there, you see. Has to be in tomorrow. Hmm, yes. So it has to be posted today. Yes, well, that makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah. Mm. Well, that's why I put it on the table. Oh. What the? Mom! Mm. 
Mm. You're threading on little Bob. Oh, uh-huh. Sorry, Bucky. Now, don't cry, Bob. Mm. He didn't mean it. Mm. He just didn't look. Mm. All better. Mm. Now, dry your eyes and eat your breakfast like a good little boy. Mm. Mm. You haven't changed your mind again, have you? I mean, you are going to apply for the job. Look, Jean, don't let's yes, go into all that again. Yes, I know we've been through it all before. I know you haven't a chance of getting it. There are other people with much better chances. That's putting it mildly. No, my trouble is I'm not sufficiently up in Welsh literature. At least if you apply, you have a chance of convincing the committee. I'd be left there with Welsh egg on my face. My pride would never stand it. What did I go in there for? Your handkerchief, here. Yeah. Oh, yes. That extra 150 a year would make all the difference. Jean... You don't have to convince me, love. I know what a difference it'll make. But I'm realistic, you see. I don't live in a fool's paradise. No. You live in three rooms and half a bathroom with stags. Mm. Daddy! What, love? Bob doesn't like you. He just said so. Oh, really? Jolly good. Won't hurt to post it, will it? No, love, look, I was going to post it anyway. I think you've got a chance. Honestly, I do. I think the days of the stag are numbered. Yes, well, I certainly hope so. Bye-bye, Freddy. Bye-bye, love. Uh, hmm. Bye-bye, Gwyneth. Hmm? Bye-bye, darling. You've got bad breath, Daddy. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Don't forget Bulk. Hmm? Bye-bye, Bulky. No, properly. You must kiss him properly, because he knows you don't like him. He's very perceptive, isn't he? No, no, he's upside down. Uh, what else was there? Work. Bye, John. Bye, bye, love. to let a dog on the street without a collar, don't you, Mr. Davis? What? What, what do you mean, let him out? Mr. Lewis, Mr. Hey, hey. Go on, boy. Get in. It's your birthday. Go on. That's it. Good lad. How's the family? Fine, boy. Oh, Megan's not up to much. Oh? Sick as a dog she was this morning. Could hardly raise a lovely egg from the pillow. Oh, do the bus. You know what brings it on? What? Best please. Oh, town hall, please. Take that, please. Thank you. Excuse me. Can you get up? Thank you. Any more now, please? Uh, uh, the same for me, please. I'm not going to jump for it, man. I'm Can sorry. I be of any assistance, John? Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, sir. No, I was saying about Megan, you know. Well, the reason she gets these bad spells is because she's worried about my chances. Chances of what? Well, of getting the job, of course. Uh, 
vacancy for sub-librarian. Oh, yes. I mean, I don't want to be a nuisance about it, but, well, Megan keeps on, you see. Well, look, it's an obsession with her. So really, to, well, to satisfy her, really, well, I just wondered if you, uh, if you intend to apply or not. Yes, well, I was thinking about having a bash, yes. Bash? Uh, no, no, not a bash. What I mean is I probably will apply for the job, you know, for the laughs. <laughs> anyway, there's no need for you to worry about that, Yian. No. No, indeed. After all, it's it's your life. You you've got to lead it. Mm. Uh, Yian, do you ever uh, do you ever think about other things? You know, I mean, things like women. Women? Yes, you know, women in general, uh, apart from Megan. Apart from Megan? Well, you know, nothing. I was just thinking about something. Oh goodness! I must just uh, drop Megan's prescription in the chemist. Ah, oh, right, oh Yian. See you later. Hmm. Lewis, here I am again. Bet you're glad to see me so bright and early. I'm one of your best customers, aren't I? Very nearly, Mr. Hyman, yes. Oh, don't call me that. Got a Christian name, haven't I? You've seen it on the ticket often enough. Here I say, you got any more books like that? Well, not exactly like that, Mr. Hyman, no. Not quite so many egg stains. I enjoyed that, you know. Loved reading it. Mm. Yes, I can see you enjoyed reading it. Well, that's... Um, Shilling to pay us, it's three weeks overdue, you see? Yeah, I know. What the hell are you doing with this flavor? We'll wait here, will you, darling? Well, a bit late as it oh, is. Oh, I shall be a ticket. I can't take Scampi inside. You haven't got anything to do, have you? No, except go to work, of course. Well, nothing serious. The thing is, anybody might see us. See me and that. Well, what's wrong in that, darling? It's broad daylight. You're fully dressed. You're not committing any offense. No, no, of course not. <laughs> All right, then. <laughs> uh, don't be too long. I'd love one of those, wouldn't you, Ridi Valga? One of what? The car, silly. You are a tease. That's a shilling you have to pay, Mr. Hyman. Oh, I don't mind that. I mean, you know what I mean. It's the cheaper the price when you when you get a book like this. Oh, good morning. Oh, wonder if you could help me, would you? Please? I mean, I, I really enjoyed that, you know. <laughs> I mean, they, they lived happily ever after, and, and they don't always, do they? I mean, I hate it when they pay the penalty for their sins and all that sort of thing. Oh. Well, if you haven't got this, perhaps you've got something else. Like that. Yes, that's the whole point. Well, I could look. I think it might be a very good idea. What now? Yes, preferably now. Something wrong, Miss Jones, is there? Oh, yes. This lady's got an inquiry. Oh, perhaps I can help you. Yes, I should think you probably could. It's really quite a simple matter. I see, yes. Well, Miss Jones, if you like to deal with that gentleman over there, I'll attend to this, you see? Oh, then. I'm so sorry. I never seem to be able to make myself understood with that sort of girl. What's the trouble then? Actually, I was looking for a book. Mm -hmm. Or books on the history of costume in medieval Wales. Preferably with lots of coloured illustrations. Mm. 
I'm designing the costumes for the next production of the Darcy players, you see. Ah, yes. I wonder, would you have any suggestions, Mr... Lewis. Well, have you any suggestions, Mr. Lewis? Oh. Hmm? You're not the Mr. Lewis, are you? Well, who is the Mr. Lewis? Not the John Lewis who writes to dramatic criticism in the Arbor Darcy Chronicle. Well, I think that's putting it a bit strong, no. I do the uh, Gilbert and Sullivan, you know, and the Miners Club pantomime, but it's hardly Kenneth Tyne and country, really. <laughs> <laughs> Nevertheless, all the Darcy players live in dread of what you might say. We yeah. just quake. Well, well. I promise you. Uh, by the way, my name is Elizabeth Griffith Williams. Do you know my husband by chance? Uh, no, I haven't had that pleasure. No. Well, Mrs. Griffith Williams. If you'd like to come with me and have a look around the shelves, I'm sure we shall be able to find the solution to your problems. There's not a great selection, I'm afraid. Most of the good stuff is out at the moment. Oh. What about, uh, what about the memoirs of a Welsh hatter, signed by the hatter in mint condition? Hmm? Hmm. No. Uh, now then, uh, what have we got here? There's the concise history of cod pieces. Now, that's a, that's a very interesting oh, well, book. I don't think yeah. that's quite the Darcy players. Charming illustrations, though. Yes, yes. It's a very popular book in its way, that one. Oh. Yes, it's a very popular book in its way. That is. Mm. Ah, yes. Expediency and morality in Welsh dress. Oh, this is, this is, this, this might be just what you're looking for. Morality in Welsh dress. It's got uh, quite a history, this one. It was only taken off the band list in 1959, since when, of course, it hasn't been asked for. Really? Mm. No, I don't think so. No, eh? Yeah? Hmm. Well, that's it, I'm afraid. We haven't made much progress, have we? Uh, no, we, uh, we haven't really, have we? <laughs> Yes. Well, uh, I think that if you'd like to come and have a word with our Mr. Jenkins, Mr. Uh, he's the expert around here on all things Welsh. Right. He'll probably be able. Uh, it's through here. Probably be able to help you. Oh, um, Yian, this is Mrs. Griffith Williams, who is desperate to pick your brains. Mrs. Williams, I'll leave you in safe hands. Did I hear him say Mrs. Griffith Williams? Mrs. Griffith Williams. That's right. Yeah, Mr. Lewis. Do you think I could borrow this? Expediency and morality in Welsh dress. I don't see why not, yes. Pages 28 to 34 inclusive are the ones you're looking for, Mr. Hyman. Right, thanks. You know what they say, don't you? What's that? A page a day keeps the analyst away. You can depend that every avenue will be explored. Thank you. I think I've given you all the details, Mr. Jenkins, including my address and telephone number. We are ex-directory, so do get in touch, oh, won't you? Naturally, naturally, Mrs. Griffith Williams. Of course, I'll get, get working right away. Yes, it's rather important, as Mr. Lewis realizes. Yes, yes, of course, Mrs. Griffith Williams, and, and thank you. And thank you, John. Uh, how's the wife? She's very well, thank you, Yayan. So are both of the children. Oh, good, good. Uh, well, uh, thank you again, Mrs. Griffith Williams. Not at all. You'll be more than helpful. By the way, you must come to one of my literary parties one of these days. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Griffith Williams. You know who she is, don't you, John? Mrs. Griffith Williams? You're kidding. Her husband's on the council. Married her in the wartime, he did. Mm. She came over with the free Norwegians. Really? Oh, very, very powerful man, Mr. Griffith Williams. He's one of those, is he? Oh, he's chairman of the library committee. Mm. Oh, extra special nice hours, I can tell you. You didn't <sighs> creep, did you? Look, I wonder if she meant it, you know, about inviting us, I mean. Well, anything's possible, isn't it? Look at this now. Dear, what 
adept it is to have influence. Yeah. Mind you, a decent bust measurement helps too, you know. Oh, dear, you do get rude sometimes, <laughs> really, John. <laughs> still don't understand why they should invite us. Did you say you met you at the library? Yes. Uh, have I got any clean hackers, though? Oh, I'll find them in a minute. Mm. You mean she just came into the library and invited you? No, 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 of course not. No, she wanted some special books, you see, and uh, I put myself out a bit for her. Where did you say they were, love? I said I'd find them in a minute. Mm. Just interested to know why they should invite us. Yes, it is odd, isn't it? Daddy, are you going out to leaving us all alone? No, my love. Auntie Megan Jenkins is coming to sit with you. Walt doesn't like her. She kisses him and she's got all hairs on her face. Walt will be asleep at the time she comes, my love. No, he won't. He says he's going to stay awake all night. Twinnett, is that you? You should close your eyes now and go to sleep. I shan't tell you again. She is asleep, love. I was just tucking her in. They're not in there, love. I've looked. Oh. Be careful when you use them. They're full of holes. Yeah. What time did the iron say Megan's getting here? I think about quarter past. Oh. But uh, she's always late, you know that. Do this up at the back, will you? Hmm? Uh, have you got a hook on the top? Well, of course. Right. Still seems funny to me. What does? This party. What's it made of? Listen, if you don't stand still, I can't do this thing up. It's in aid of some amateur theatricals, I think. What sort of woman is she? Middle-aged? Yes, I suppose you might say she's middle-aged, yeah. Attractive? Yes, I suppose she's attractive in a obvious sort of way. Her husband's uh, chairman of the library committee. Did I tell you that? No, you forgot to tell me that. Well, that's what he is, anyway. There, all right? Is the dress all right? Mm? Yes, love, it looks smashing, lovely. Yes. Did you do something with it, did you? Well, uh, I lowered the front of it, see? Not too low, is it? Well, as uh, long as it stays up, you know. <laughs> oh, I hope so. Stuck some elastoplast to my bra. And remember, stick close to me. No wandering around seeing what you can pick up like you usually do. Now, when did I last do that? The last time. The last time. You look nice. You do look young tonight. Well, uh, I am young, uh, tonight. Oh, that could be Megan. You let her in. I'll go and take a look at the kids. I am young tonight. You're so young tonight. Miss Honor, Mrs. Davis, friend. Upsetting the dog like that this time of night. Oh, hello, Yayan. You coming up? No, John, thank you. I, I can only spare a couple of moments. Huh? Something the matter? Yes, yes. I'm afraid we shall we shall have to disappoint you tonight, John. Something wrong with Megan? Yes, yes. Uh, same old business, you know. Uh, migraine. But fortunately, it's only a mild attack this time. Still, I'm I'm afraid any any babysitting's out of the question. I see. I well, I can't leave her. Well, it can't be helped, really, can it? Well, good night then, John. I'll uh, see you in the morning. Then. We'll give our love to Megan. Right. Good night, then, lad. What's the matter? Well, we've had it. <coughs> Megan's a usual 30 degrees under. Oh. Well, that's that, then, isn't it? Well... I don't know about you, love, but uh, I feel full of fun now. Just what I could do with an evening at home. Couldn't be better. Hmm. Yes. The Lewis's at home special house and garden feature. Oh, yes, Mr. Lewis said, yes. We, uh, we always dress for dinner. Do you really? Yes, oh, always. Why is that? Well, you see, what it does, it gives that extra touch of flair to the bottle of H.P. sauce on the mantelpiece, isn't it? Their dining room, please note, was done out in the new contemporary sick green. Oh, darling, I know it's a bind, but it isn't the end of the world, is it? 
No, 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 it isn't the end of the world. I'm quite clear about that. Suppose we'll have to phone them. Her, I should say. Who? Well, the obviously attractive Mrs. Whatnot. Why? Well, it's only polite, isn't it? Oh, polite, my... Listen, I've got an idea. Go and phone them, and on the way back, pop into the Picton Arms, get a couple of flagons, some crisps, and we'll fill our boots and listen to the radio. My treat. Off you go. Getting generous in your old age. Oh, going out, are you, Mr. Lewis? Oh, very observant of you, Mrs. Davis. Leaving the children alone, I suppose? Yes, and I've put the oil stove close to the cot and I turn the wicker. You are not fit to have charge of little children the way you carry on, Mr. Lewis. Well, I must get on with my booze in now, Mrs. Davis. I have enjoyed our little chat. If I had my way, I'd call the RSVP. And a good year for it, Mrs. Davis. Well, come on in, Edna, and shut that door. <laughs> Excuse me. Good evening, Mr. Lewis. It is a good evening, isn't it? Yes. You can't get away from it, can you, you poor bastard? I'm sorry for you, Lewis. I really am sorry for you. You're doomed. Drowning. And it's no good pretending the old urge isn't there, because it is. But just settle for it. You're not going out. Make the phone call, apologize to that sexy Mrs. Griffith Williams with the two Fs, thank you, and then sublimate the whole thing in cider and potato crisps. And good luck. That dress is too low, you know. Well, don't look down it. Don't look down it. Only pleasure left to me. Domestic bliss on the white collar level. Interviewed last night, Mr. John Lewis, a librarian's runner who changes his shirt only twice a week, if that, expressed profound dissatisfaction with his lot. Whoa. What are we doing, Jean? I mean, what are we doing, apart from waiting for the suit to come back into fashion? No, I'm serious. I know you're serious. I mean, just, just look at me. I'm dressed here like a bookmaker's ponce. I ought to be one. Or a road sweeper or something. I mean, why did I bother to cram to pass exams, to take degrees? Where did it get me? I'd be much better off as a road sweeper. There's no doubt about it. I would be... I would be far better off as a road sweeper. Look, love, I know how you feel. But I think you're going to get that job. If there's any justice, you've just got to get it. There is no justice in or outside the Abadasi Public Library. Well, if this Mrs. Williams is what you say she is... What did I say she was? Well, anyway, she did invite us to the party tonight. Oh, well, naturally. I mean, no party's complete without us, is it? People invite me just to get the name of my tailor. I was only going to say, pass me those crisps, love. Maybe she'll come into the library again. Then if her husband's this big wig on the committee, she'll probably tell him about you. You can charm her. You can charm the birds from the trees if you want to. It's only when you get in one of your moods. What's the betting Jehovah's Witnesses? No. Wrong time of the year. It'll be banned the Sunday opening. They're due for another go. Well, you took the right man this time, I can tell you. Quiet, will you? It's a, a, a most generous suggestion of Mrs. Uh, uh, Griffith Williams. Uh, out of the blue like that, I, I uh, uh, really don't quite know what to say. Um, Anything uh, wrong, darling? No, no. Uh, uh, would you excuse me? Just one mo moment. What is it? Mrs. Griffith Whatnot sent some character to babysit for us so as we can go to the party. What sort of character? Some chap. Doesn't look too happy about it, but apparently he's quite good with children. 
Well, has he got a nice face? Yes, well, I suppose he has, yes. I mean, uh, it doesn't look like a secret centipod drinker, if that's what you mean. Uh, what do you think? Uh, pop in there for, a, for an hour, maybe? All right. They don't usually wake up, do they? Oh, no, they're... No. I don't even know what the fellow's second name is. I, I am uh, just... Um, uh, would you like to pop up for a moment, uh, uh, Bill? Bill, this is my wife, Jean. Jean, this is Bill. <laughs> how do you do? You were just saying how very nice it is yes. of you to... Uh, yes, it's very good of you to leave the party and... And, uh, yes. Uh, Jean will show you where everything is, Bill. We won't be a moment, because we're just going to pop in there and pay our respects, you know. <laughs> so, uh, yes, well, if you'll, um, just come with me, I'll show you where the kitchen is. It's, uh, it's just through here. <laughs> Trouble. Just unusual if they do. Very good, usually. Um, by the way, Bill, you'll find half a bottle of uh, tea if you if you want some. Oh yes, thank you. Have a cup of tea. 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 <laughs> well, uh, bye bye then. Yes, well, uh, see you later. Excuse me, one more. Jean, this is Mrs. Griffith Williams. How very nice. Old Bill arrived safely, did he? Oh, yes, sir. Very good of you both to go to all this trouble. Oh, no trouble at all. Would you like to use the girls' room? I wouldn't mind. Lovely dress you're wearing. Uh, use that one over there. Oh, thank you. Oh, no. No, wait a minute. Might be somebody being sick in there. There was a moment to go. Use mine upstairs. Second door on the right. Thank you. Straight through. You wait here for me, will you, love? Yes, love. I'll uh, hang on down here for you. All right. What did you think of old Bill? Oh, I thought he was a very public-spirited chap. He's not bad, is he? For last year's model. Have some caviar. Hmm? Oh, thank you very much. Mm, I've never had caviar before. It's worth trying. Yes, well, uh... I'll try anything once. One. Well, I suppose I mustn't keep you to myself any longer. Mm. Let's go in and meet some of the Darcy players. Let me get you a drink. Sir. Then there's somebody you must meet. I'd like to meet your husband. Hmm? Oh, he'll be around somewhere. No, I want you to meet our author first. This looks vaguely like scotch. All right? Yes, thank you very much, yes. Now, where is the bard? I was toying with the idea of translating Kafka into Welsh, but how do you translate his values? Darling, stop being brilliant for just one second and meet a late arrival. Garrett? Yes, this is Mr. yes, 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 I know. The original white-collar slave. How are you, Lewis? Still peddling trash to the masses? Yes, that's right, yes. How about you? Still writing it? You uh, two know each other, do you? Oh, yes, I should say so. We know each other from way back. We used to knock conkers together. You never told me. No, well, of course he wouldn't. He's far too modest. I mean, if there's one thing you're not, you're not a name dropper, are you, Garrett? Well, what about Mrs. Lewis? Yes, he knows her, too. Also from way back. Hello, Garrett. Hello, Jean. Well, 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 this is quite like old times, isn't it? Mm. 
Mind you, uh, a lot of soap has lodged behind the old wedding ring since we were at Trois. I was just trying to think what happened the last time we all met. You said something that was really... John. No, no, no. It was really very good. You said... Uh, you said the best man can't always win. Terribly original. It stuck right in my mind. I suppose you think you're being really witty. Oh, no. I... Uh, another drink, anybody? I'm sure you would. I was plowing through your novel again the other day, Nourished is the Grass, or should I say Nourished is the Grass. We have an unsigned first edition. I believe they are the rare ones, aren't they? You coming to the first night of my play, Jean? Oh, we'd like to very much, but uh, a bit difficult for me, see? But John will be coming, won't you, love? Hmm? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Well, of course, I get in free, you know. What's it called? Bowen Thomas, Tailor of Clandilo. What a fabulous title. I wonder why nobody's used it before. Is it a comedy, is it? Here we are, Vernon. This is Mr. and Mrs. Lewis, my husband. Hello. How do you do? Well, uh, we were just talking about Gary's new play. Yes, we're being badly hung up over the costumes. Oh, sorry to hear that. What seems to be the trouble? Well, nothing's been done towards it. Nothing at all. Poor Elizabeth here has been trying through the last month to persuade Mr. Lewis's public library to disgorge some books which could help us. But, of course, without any success at all. Oh, uh, Jean, I got somebody over there who's just dying to meet you. Perhaps if we knew what you wanted, we might be able to do something about it. You see, it's rather difficult to get hold of a book when you don't know the title or the author, isn't it? Damn it, man. Damn it. It's your bloody job. You don't want us to do it for you, surely to God. Mustn't be too hard on him, you know. Why not? Well, you know what these fellows are like. I mean, to say, after all, I suppose being a poet entitles him to be a bit different from us chaps. Don't you think? Well, as dramatic critic of the Avadasi Chronicle at ten bob a time, I suppose I should agree with you, sir. However, in my own opinion, I think he's a puffed-up, undersized, four-eyed little twit. Excuse me, won't you? Fascinating. Did you do that? Excuse me, um, where do they keep the thunderbox in this place? Where does one go if one wants to wash one's hands? Oh, straight across there. An original. Yes. Mm. Do you like it? Hmm. Not bad. You want to get one with that new French chap? Oh. Um. Yes. Uh, I was looking at some pictures in a magazine the other day. Seems to have got it all buttoned up. Really? How mm. interesting. Yes. He. Uh, oh. I have one of mine. Oh, thank you. What he does, you see, he puts his canvas on the floor. Chucks some working great dollops of paint on it and then drags a naked woman across it. Mm. Yes, yeah. Sort of job I'd like that. I enjoy cleaning the brushes, anyway. Hmm. Yeah. Um, tell me something. Hmm? Oh, I just wondered if you were going to um, apply for the vacancy at the library. That's all. Well, I had thought about it, yes. You know, I think you should apply. I think you might have a chance. 
Vernon's on the library committee, you know. Vernon? Uh, Vernon, your husband, do you mean? Mm. Ah, yes. Of course, I don't interfere at all, but he sometimes asks my advice, you know. And do you give it? Sometimes. Depends. I see. Only, you see, it just occurred to me that it might be a help for you to know the kind of man they're looking for, and that kind of thing. The interview's terribly important, I'm told. Yes, well, first impression, you know. Hmm. Yes, they do count, you know. Oh, they do, definitely, yes. Uh, what sort of a man is it they're looking for? Oh, I don't know, really. Probably somebody um, very like uh, you. Hmm. What would you do if I kissed you? You wouldn't do anything violent, would you? Hmm, violent? Only I'd like to kiss you, you see, because... I'm a great believer in first impressions myself. some new handkerchiefs before that interview. You reckon I'll get as far as the interview then, do you? I think you'll get a lot further. Mm Congratulations. Oh, John, you're here, boy. Well, look, I'm afraid I've been rather sick. Yes, well, you've got a lot to be sick about, haven't you? Mm. Seems to run in your family. Well, you see, Mega. Well, thanks very much. Oh, I'm to wait for the gentleman, sir. Yes, I'll uh, send him right down. Thank you, then. Good night. Julie, we ought to have given him something. No, no. Did you say Mrs. Griffith Williams actually offered to help? Yes, yes. There, you see, I told you to cultivate her. Aren't you glad you went now? Oh, sure. Yes. Uh, quiet, Sammy. There are people here trying to sleep. What's all this noise about you? Mr. Lewis? Hello, Bill. How's it been going? Hope the children didn't give you too much trouble. Oh, no, no. Uh, you're too fine. Good. Just bulk? Yes. I had to take him to the lavatory seven times. See you're winning. <laughs> oh. Hello. Thank you, sir.
It's a good thing my brakes work. Yes, it is, isn't it? I was uh, just on my way home. So I noticed. Can I give you a lift? Oh, lovely. Thank you very much. Well, jump in. I just thought of something. You wouldn't like to join some of us for a drink tonight, would you? Well, uh, that's very kind of you, but uh, unfortunately, it's the children, you see. It's uh, illegal to leave them unattended after dark. Well, I'm afraid old Bill is out this time. How do you manage in the ordinary way? You must have some sort of a system. Oh, we have. It consists mainly of not going out. <laughs> I'll have a word with Jean. Ah. Oh, uh, uh, oh, uh. Oh, oh, oh. Who is it? Oh. Who's in my house? It's only me and a friend, Mrs. Davis. Oh, it's you, Mr. Lewis. Visitors, is it? Yes, that's who it is, Mrs. Davis. I don't want any noise, Mr. Lewis. Neither do I, Mrs. Davis. Quaint little place you've got. Yes, yes. Uh, oh. Jean, love, you're busy. We've got a visitor. Hello, Jean. I met you better half in the street. Good. Well, uh, sorry the place is in a bit of a mess. Wasn't expecting anyone. Oh, that's all right. The uh, thing is, some of us are going out for a few drinks tonight, and I just wondered if you'd like to join us. I, um... Uh, I gather from John, though, you're a bit stuck for a babysitter. Yes, uh, I'm afraid we are. Uh, in any case, I'm not... Uh... Well, look, uh, I don't really think I can come. Oh, dear. I was saying that uh, it, it might be a bit difficult, you know. You go, love, if you're keen. But look, Jean, love, why don't you go and I'll look after the children? No, I'd rather you went. Oh, dear. I feel a bit of a brute yanking your husband away like this. Oh, well, don't feel that on my account. Well... We must fix up a date ourselves, just the two of us. A real hen party. And pull the boys to pieces, hmm? Yes, I'd enjoy that. Let's do that. Oh, what a sweet little girl. And what's your name, hmm? Lost her tongue. No, I haven't. Bolt doesn't like me telling my name to other people. And who is Bolt? Oh, uh, I'll, uh, I'll tell you all about Bolt later on. Yeah. No, you're quite sure. Quite sure. Have a good time. Bye bye, love. Uh, bye bye, Gwyneth. Ready? <laughs> bye bye, Jean. Don't forget, we got a date. No, I won't. I'll leave something out for you. Cold. <laughs> Bob didn't like her. Shh, love. Come on now, let's get you dry. Which pub is it? I don't know, really. But why don't we go to the Queen's Head for a drink or two first? Then we'll go home. And I'll get changed. Staff's night out, is it? Yes. Vernon's out too, funnily enough. Oh, really? Yes, well, he's more or less staff, isn't he? <laughs> Would you like to fix us both a drink while I pop upstairs? Uh, yes. 
In there. And um, bring them up. In there? Yes. I'll have a gin and, oh, tonic will do. And some cigarettes. Um, hmm? how will I find you again? I'll leave a train. Tennis? Oh, come on through. I'm in the bedroom. Put the drinks down somewhere. On the bath will do. Make yourself at home. I'll be out in a tick. Yes, I've, uh, I've always been very quiet. Ever since I was a child, I was quiet, you know. What do you think of the master's gymnasium? Oh, I think it's very impressive. One of these days he's going to do himself an injury which will rather defeat the object. Oh, I'm sorry I'm being so long, can't decide what to wear. Well, that's all right. Don't you worry about me. You'll take as long as you want. I can wait. <laughs> you see what I mean? Yes. Mm. It's a uh, funny old Vernon buying himself one of these. They're uh, quite lethal. Oh, he didn't. It was a present for me. Oh. Light me a cigarette, will you, darling? Yes. The, um, the first time I saw this done, um, Paul Henry did it for Bette Davis in a film called Now Voyager. <laughs> My recollection. It's a very good-looking major in the pay call on the front at Rue in midwinter. He got them both stuck to his lip, bled copiously. When was that? <clears throat> oh, 42. Major wanted to marry me. I love the war. Does that shock you? No, not especially. I loved every minute of it. I cried on me day. I should have married the major, but I didn't. Oh, I um, found out about your dreaded interview, by the way. Yes? You um, are on a short list of four. Mm -hmm. Does that please you? Yes, very much, yes. Thank you. You are um, grateful? Oh, yes. Yes, I am. How grateful? Don't you think that uh, it might be a bit better if we got out of the gymnasium here? I want to go 
Yes, so you shall, my darling. But listen, you know, if we could perhaps get away from the boat race atmosphere in the bedroom, maybe. Mm. Carry me. Hmm? Carry me. Bloody marvelous if we don't look nippy. Where are you? What are you doing? Get the get out of my door. What are you trying to go? I don't know. I think I'm going to go, Don. I don't know. Get the sleeve, get the sleeve. Just that. Right. Stop that awful panting. Now take deep breaths. Put yes. your head between your legs or something. I'll still burn. What do I do? Stay here or what? No. Bathroom. Oh. I know what. What? You pick these up. What do I want to do that for? Well, if anybody does come in, you can paint as much as you like. It'd be look odd, isn't it? Picking back like? Well, anything's going to look a bit odd. Yes. All right. It's better than nothing. Uh, the important thing is to have something to do. I've always found. Yes, that's right. We go on. Is that you, darling? You worry too much about that contract, Billy. It's as good as signed. Where are you off to, Charlie? To get the ice, is that right? Yes, second door. Darling. Oh, hello, love. Just brought some of the council back for a night, Captain. To join us? Oh, uh, I see, darling. I, I was just thinking of going early to bed for once. All right, love. See how you feel. What are you both having? Anybody wants ice? You'll have to wait for Charlie. Ah. Panic's over. Master's having a drink with the boys. What happens now, then? Do I go and offer him cigarettes or something? No, darling. I think in your present state of health, you'd better do what is laughingly known as a bunk. Yes, all right. Oh, no. Oh, no. What? No, don't. Darling, don't worry now. Just give me a kiss. Good night. Oh, no, hmm? look. Do, 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 do you mind if I don't at the moment? <laughs> Only, uh... You are funny. Still, I wanted to get you to commit yourself. And you have, haven't you? Yes, I suppose I have, yes. So have I. Mm. Go on, that's all. Yes. Um, uh, hmm? which way do I go when I... Uh... Oh, out the front, I suppose. But be careful, the bottom of the stairs, huh? Yes, through the front yes. door. Yes, bottom of the stairs. Bottom be careful, the remember. He's into the yes, living Yes, uh, I'll see you again, then. Yes, don't leave it too long. I'll be lonely. Hmm. Checking up whether everything was all right. You know, don't like leaving a job when things aren't all right, really. 
It is everything all right to your knowledge? Yes, I think mm. so. The plumbing and everything, because, uh, I mean, I wouldn't like to sort of uh, run out on it. Oh, that's cleared it. You won't have any more trouble with that. Good job I came along, isn't it? Well, uh, Nozda. Oh, golden hot it is. Warm up a treat that you can. Warm up a treat that is, yes. Well, uh, don't worry about this, because the heat will draw it all back in, you see. Oh, I'm sorry, boy. All right. Cut it a bit fine, didn't you? Bears. Nothing smaller, man? Hmm? No. Have to wait then, won't you? Oh, Tom. Three. Thank you. Thank you. Bowen Thomas Taylor of Clandilo. You reading that for pleasure, are you? Yes, indeed. Great, great pleasure. As a matter of fact, John, I, I've been privileged to be asked to play a part in it. Oh? Who by? The author himself asked me, Mr. Pogart. Well, they don't come much higher, do they? Well, well, well. What part did he ask you to play, Ian? Death. Thank you. A change, sir. I fancy your chances there, boy. I think she knows you're an actor, Yian. Really, John? Oh, yes. She's heard all about the kiss of death, you see. Try and be professional. I'm not professional. I'm an amateur. Your performance leaves no doubt about it. And put your blasted head on. Look, it's too late. It's too late. Switch it off. Going up. I'm over here, Mr. Probert. Look, I'm in trouble. One leg is jammed. It is how much? His knee's not slow. It's jammed, Mr. Probert, jammed. How about oiling him? Hey, I. I'll go and get a spanner. Oh, don't go! Hold on, Mr. Probert! I collapse! Start the pianos again and hold the house lights! Too late, they've already gone. Do you, do you, do you. Play it again. Play it again. Oh, Lord. I better go and find out what's happened. See you later. Yes. Mr. Probert, it's, it's still jammed and it's agony. You can stand up if you try. I'll never forgive you for this. Well, maybe we could postpone the prologue and make it the epilogue, eh, Mr. This Pro isn't the bloody BBC, is it? Oh, after all, it doesn't matter where you start in this play. I mean, you can follow it. It happens all the time in the cinema. <laughs>
What's happening there? I don't know. It's a madhouse up there. Oh, let's find something more exciting to do, huh? Fine, but uh, what about my notice for this uh, play, is it? <laughs> oh, that's easy. It's got no plot, no action, no sense. Sounds to me like one of Probert's best. Oh. So the only thing you've got to do is to mention the entire cast, say who loaned the furniture, and that's it. Your home, boy. Come on. And for God's sake, speak up. Right, clear, clear. Everybody off. Clear. Clear. Right. Curtain going up. Die death walks here. Die death walks here. Die death walks here. Should have used you in the tank car. They did. Well, Mr. Lewis. Well, Mrs. Griffith Williams. <clears throat> We um, got some unfinished business, haven't we? Yes, we certainly have, Mrs. Griffith Williams. So, um, let me put you out of your misery. Any time you like. About that job. Oh. Vernon's got the message. Hmm? Hmm. All you got to do is uh, to make sure that you don't let yourself down at the interview. I'll make Next sure about week. that. Doesn't that please you? Yes. Now, don't I get anything for giving you that piece of good news? Hmm? I presume that my sincere thanks would hardly be adequate. Hardly. <laughs> what are you doing? I was trying to get my shoes off. Never mind. <clears throat> Sincere enough. Mm, again, my darling. Mm. Come on, 
let's get out of here. Huh? Well, we better not have the headlights on, have we? What can I drive without any lights on? Look out! Ow! Mrs. Griffith Williams? Well, Mr. Lewis, we don't seem to have much luck, do we? Nothing wrong with the situation that a good mechanic couldn't put right. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pity that you have to go and write that notice on the plane. Oh, don't worry, I'll uh, <laughs> scribble it off in Jim's cafe and hand it in on the way home. Don't forget, mention everyone in the cast and the costumes. Don't worry, it's all in the program here. Yeah. Darling, uh, have to see you soon. Yes. Um, we're not touching anything, are we? So? Yes. Don't forget. No. Well, drive carefully. And, um, drive carefully. I've been waiting for this, Mr. Lewis. Sorry, Di. It's a bit of a difficult one to write. All right, I'll get on with it then. Daddy? What, love? Did you say good morning to Bob? Hmm? Oh, no. I forgot about that. Well, that's all right. Because he doesn't want anybody to speak to him. He says he's going mad with it all. With all what, love? Worry. He's worried about the bomb. Gwyneth, hurry up now. I've taken all the bones out for you. See, so you gave the play a good notice. Yes, well, uh, I thought I wouldn't be too unkind. <laughs> Very noble of you in the circumstances. What circumstances? What's the matter with you? Got the screaming up dabs again, have you? No. Well, huh? I've just been doing a lot of thinking, that's all. Huh? What about? About you and me, to be exact. I'll tell you, we're out of our depth, you and I. We've been corrupted. Okay. Not more than usual, I wouldn't have thought. entirely sure I understand what you mean. You and your friendship with the Griffith Williamses. No, look, don't bother to deny it because I know it's true. And I'm not blaming you either because I've got my own shame. What business had I with, with theatricals and the like? Well, what good did it bring me? A laughing stock I am. Burning down the theater. Well, if it'll make you feel any better, you are now being served tea by the ex-dramatic critic of the Abadasi Chronicle. And look what I did to you the night of the party. 
Now, what has made us what we are? This ruddy job, isn't it? Trying to better ourselves. I, uh, look, I only joined the theatricals to, to meet the right people who'd, who'd put in a word for me. But the point is, they're not our people. We're not their people. Anyway, we're not going to better ourselves that way. The price, the price is too high. Excuse me. You're going to be long, love, only there's a good program on. I'm going to finish here and I'm going to bed. Oh. I'm going to tell you about last night, you know. I'm not trying to avoid it. Hand me that towel, will you? Hmm? Sorry, right, love, I'll dry. Um, well, I did see Mrs. Griffith Williams last night at the play. Only, uh, it was so lousy we left before the end. Well, uh, you know, uh, before the fire. <laughs> she wanted to talk about the job. You see, apparently her husband's word is law on the committee, and uh, I suppose that's really good news, isn't it? Yes, very. You don't sound very pleased about it. Oh, I expect I will when I get used to it. Get used to it? What have you got to get used to? You having an affair. What? <laughs> Jeannie. None of that. I don't want any of that. Look, I'm not having an affair with Mrs. Griffith Williams in the way you mean. Well, that's smashing then, isn't it? We don't have to talk about it Yes, anymore. of course we have to talk about no, it. No, we don't. I don't want to hear about it. It has nothing to do with me. You do as you want, but don't tell me about it because I don't want to know, see? Look, all I'm trying to do, Jeannie, is to apologize to you it's and It's no promise use you. apologizing, John. Talking and promising and God knows what. Do what you want to do. Only don't keep up this talk, talk, talk. I've enough to put up with without that. Yes, but what else can I do? I mean, all I can do is to try to tell you, isn't it? And you tell me about it and it's all right. Until next time. Will you listen to me? Perhaps you think I don't know you. Perhaps you think I'm bloody blind. But I know the look you get when you start fancying a bit on the side. Well, I don't mind that part anymore. I just don't want to hear about it, understand? But that's what I keep trying to tell you. There is nothing to hear. You think you can get rid of what you do by coming and telling me about it afterwards. Is that it? No. Well, you can't. Go off and do it if you want to, as long as you don't tell me. I couldn't care less what you get up to. Just give me my housekeeping every week and stay out of my way. And get that job while you're about it. You may as well. Session, do you realize? Now, which of you is Lewis? Oh, I, I'm Lewis. This came for you. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, there should be four of you. Where's the other one? Oh, he's, uh, he's retired at the moment. Well, uh, I hope there's not going to be any trouble. These things have to work like...